To this point, we've seen two major characteristics of the fluid simulation here in Rebel. So we're going to review those really quickly. The first is going to be the idea of surface tension. So if I were to come over here and pause and then paint in some water like so, then come back over here and I'm going to view that wet information and paint in some black paint like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn that off and let this diffuse. What you're going to see is that where the hard, dry areas were, the paint won't easily go beyond those boundaries. However, where the wetness of that paper exists, the paint will more easily intrude into those areas. That's what's known as surface tension. And this is something that's very, very important in terms of controlling when and where the paint diffuses and how it diffuses. The second one is what we're seeing right now. And we're not necessarily going to understand this unless we view the wet information. So I'm going to come back over here and view the wet information. And I'm going to point out to you that right now we have an equal volume of water over this entire puddle. And what I mean by that is that everything is level. Okay, so you can think of it like being a landscape. We're looking at it from above. And when we come over here and we paint with our watercolor brush, what we're going to be doing is applying not just paint, but a certain volume of water. And that volume of water is going to be higher than the volume of water in the surrounding damp area. You can think of it like a mountain in a plain. And what happens is, is that as soon as we let go, the mountain will try to disperse into the plain. And the reason why is because water always tries to seek its own level. This is a very important principle when we're working with watercolor or any kind of fluid. And this is going to be something that's really key to understanding how Ravel works and why the paint flows from one area into another. Now, the important thing to understand is that surface tension is still in effect. When we hit those dry areas, the paint wants to stop. So how do we bypass the surface tension? Well, there's a number of ways that we can do that. We're going to look at those in this video. So I'm going to go ahead and just clear that out. And the first one that I want to look at is over here under tilt. So I'm going to come over here. And currently, you can see that my tilt is not enabled because we have a gray center. If I click that gray center, you're going to see that the center turns blue. This means that the tilt is now enabled. You can see I have a line going down here. And if you don't, then just come over here and just click and drag. And what you'll see is that you'll get a line. And you can see I get a blue line as well. And that blue line is telling me the intensity. So the line overall is saying the direction in which we're tilting. And the blue line is telling us how intense this is going to be. So I'm going to pull it all the way down. I'm going to hold down the shift key to lock this so that it's going straight down. We could also lock it left or right or up. So the idea is that now we have a strong tilt going down. So what's going to happen is when I come over here and I paint again with my black watercolor, what's going to happen is gravity from the tilt is going to be pulling all the paint downward. And when enough paint builds up at the edge, it's going to break the surface tension and it's going to begin to pull out drips. So this is very important. Now, if I were to come over here and change the angle while the drip is still going, you can see that I can control the direction in which the paint is going to be moving because I'm changing the tilt of the canvas. Now, all of this is happening live while it's diffusing. So this is something that's very important to understand. I'm going to come over here and clear this real quick. I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to point it back down, holding shift to make sure it's locked down. Now, there's two modes that we can work with this in. The first is what we just got done seeing which is that we have this guy and we can go ahead and rotate the tilt if we want to. Or what we can do is we can come over here and instead rotate the canvas itself. And so I'll show you how that works. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go ahead and paint. And then I'm going to come over here to the navigator. And as this is taking its drips down, just like we had before, I'm going to go ahead and rotate. And you can see as I'm rotating, the rotation of the canvas is controlling the direction in which that canvas is being tilted. So I'm not modifying the tilt here. I'm modifying the actual rotation of the canvas. Now, if this is not the effect that I want, meaning that I want to be able to rotate the canvas without actually affecting the tilt, then what I can do is I can come over here and I can access an option here from the flyout menu, which is lock tilt to canvas. Now that I've accessed that, if I come over here and I go ahead and paint a similar type of puddle and let it begin to drip, and now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. I'm going to rotate. And you can see the rotation is ignored by the tilt. And effectively, the tilt is in complete control of what's happening, and the rotation of the canvas is having no impact. So there's times when you want one effect or the other, and it just depends upon what you like. Now I'm going to come over here and clear this out, set the rotation back to zero. And then we have a couple of other options that we want to look at over here in the flyout menu. Use accelerometer and center accelerometer. Now the idea of an accelerometer is this is a piece of hardware that's built into certain devices, usually tablets. 
And if you're using such a device and you have an accelerometer, then you can use it. Now you can see I can't because it's grayed out on my machine, but if you had one, it wouldn't be grayed out and you could choose to use the accelerometer. Now, if you set it to use the accelerometer, the next option down is center accelerometer. And what this is basically saying is that normally when we're working with an accelerometer, having it flat on a table or something like that would be considered the center point, meaning the zero point of the tilt. If we wanted to set the zero point of the tilt someplace else, then we would put the tablet into a position that we like as our zero point and then choose center accelerometer. And at that point, whatever position the tablet is in will become the new zero point for the tilt. However, generally speaking, probably more often than not a good idea to just set it flat on the table and go ahead and use it that way. So I'm gonna go over here and just leave the lock tilt to canvas, but leave the rest of the options the same as what they were before. And what I wanna do is I wanna come over here and talk about the blow tool. Now you can see the blow tool only has one option, which is size. And the idea of the blow tool, first of all, I'm gonna come over here and turn off tilt for one second, is that we need some paint. So I'm gonna come over here and just paint another puddle like so. And because we have no tilt, this paint is just gonna basically flow out in all directions and then flow back in. I can break the surface tension manually by coming over here and painting with the blow tool. And you can see that I'm actually breaking that surface tension and causing drips to go out in a variety of different directions based on where I'm breaking the surface tension with the blow tool. And I can even break the drips themselves into multiple smaller drips. Now, what's important to understand is that this is also affecting the paint that's within the puddle. You can see I'm basically pushing it around. Now, in addition to that, we can also do the same thing in a wet on wet situation. So this is wet on dry, meaning that there are dry boundaries outside of the puddle. And so we're getting very distinct drips. Now, if I wanted to do a wet on wet, what I would do is I would wet the layer. I would come back over here and make a similar puddle with the watercolor. And what'll happen is, is now we're gonna get a smooth diffusion in all directions. But if I come over here with the blow tool, I can begin to disturb that diffusion and cause it to move in different directions by using the blow tool. And at the same time, you'll see little drips are gonna shoot off just like before, but you can see how much of an impact this is having on the diffusion process. It's really disturbing it. The idea of the blow tool is as if we're blowing air through a straw onto wet paint. So you can understand that this could be very useful for manipulating the way that the paint is gonna be flowing for both a dry type of paper where we're putting wet paint on dry paper or a damp type of paper, which is what we get when we are coming over here to say wet layer. Now, the other thing that's important to understand is that you can use the blow tool by itself or you can use the blow tool with the tilt and effect. So if I come over here and I go ahead and I begin to scrub in like so, then I wait for the drips to sort of pull down and now I'm gonna go ahead and break that surface tension and I'm gonna go ahead and do like so. So you can see that we're going to get the effect of the tilt as well as the effect of the blow and we can control the way in which the paint is going to be moving in an overall downward motion, but at the same time breaking the surface tension in very specific areas by using the blow tool. So both of these effects can be used together or separately, and they're very useful for manipulating breaking the surface tension. Now that said, I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna go ahead and just clear that layer out. I'm gonna turn off the tilt for right now because we're not gonna need that. Go ahead and view my navigator instead. I'm gonna come back over here to the watercolor tool, and we're gonna look at a couple of other tools that we can use to manipulate the diffusion of the paint in the next video.